So I've got the MyQ Killer installed. It's a fully local solution for bringing your garage door opener fully local in your home so you don't have to use the damn internet to open and close your garage door. Because, yeah, my ISP sucks. Internet's out again. Pull up my cue and open the door. Nothing happens. Guess what? They don't open. And even with no internet, it opens just fine. The beauty of being local. And you can still do half closes. And it closes without the stupid beeping noises. How awesome is that? So since the last video, I did put the little keypad here so I can have ability to open the garage without having buttons and whatever so we can still put codes in since this is open to the outside here and then I did come over here and mount my project box and we'll get to that and then over here yeah I still hadn't taken the old camera down I did mount a reed sensor with the magnet on top of the door and along with another one on this side over here somewhere. And then I like to use these because they do have those little metal jacketed wires. I forgot the exact name of those, but it's really nice and you don't have to worry about them getting hung up and everything. I did attach them so we wouldn't have to worry about that. And there's somebody now. Oh, gee, where you been, bro? Hey. I've been at the park. Oh. Hey, you're sweaty and everything, huh? You gonna close the door? You gonna show me how to close the door? How you close the door? And that's it. And let's take a look at inside the project box we did here. So I just chose to mount it right here. I was gonna put some boards between it, but then I thought about the vibration and stuff over time, shaking the board and connections loose. And well, it was just easier to tap some screws into the plywood up here and attach the box. Kind of sucks for trying to do stuff because you're upside down, but I don't plan on messing around with stuff in here much. So that's pretty much it. I had the reed connections come in and tie in. I have plenty of room for expansion and I'll probably already went over all the wire connections but you can see it powered up at the status light I may even do some Bluetooth proxy stuff with it probably because it's not that far from the pool and some of the outdoor sensors and the garage door opener is this board here and you can see I have I know I had a lot of comments on that there's no battery on this so that no having to come in here and everything, the power ties from the garage door opener over to the ESP chip. I didn't want to have to worry about changing batteries and whatever, and I'll rarely probably open this box. Now, I know some people had said, hey, well, why don't you just attach and solder to the buttons on it and everything? Well, these are brand new openers. I didn't want to void the warranty because I had to wait long enough for these as it is, and if I, broke the wife's door opener or mine and yeah I'd probably never hear the end of it so this allowed me to kind of I put this wherever I wanted to I couldn't really solder and do stuff on the actual button openers and openers themselves because that was in a weird spot and so this kind of made sense for my setup with the dual doors and then I'll be able to add my sensors on the side as well and side note I always pay attention where you put your tools I can say from experience, these do ride down the highway at about 45 to 50 miles an hour. Now this isn't a commercial for uh, commercial electric, but the crazy part, I left these up here. We went, go got dinner and to the store and stuff and then came back and I was like, where's my wire strippers? Well, they were still on, stop, on top of the vehicle. 
So in second phase of the garage door, I will have some sensors come off the side and that way I can detect if the vehicle is there along with one coming off the other side to see if there's a vehicle there as well. Now I did add, I talked about this in the live stream. I probably need to fix my wire hole up. I had wasp getting in there, so I just stuck some stuff in there. I did put a smart plug on either door and that allows me to shut those off at night so I don't have to worry about the door opening up. And then this is the little power supply. It's just a simple little one amp, five volt power supply that runs over to this project box here. And since it's just adding that little door opener, it kind of goes on top of things. So not having to void any warranties or whatever, or mess with functionality of what's there. You're not removing any functionality while adding functionality. So I still got my keypad on the outside, which I showed in the last video. So I got my keypad here, got the regular keypads, which I showed in the laundry room there. Plus I have the little multi-status sensor so I can see from the living room and open from in there. So lots of options. Plus we can do notifications and everything with the phone as well. Now how this is all laid out, I do want to thank Caleb Pryor for throwing this little graphic together. Definitely makes things a lot easier than me trying to explain on my stupid little box with the wires flowing under and everything. This makes it a lot easier. I will, of course, leave all the graphics and everything on my website. Links are down below as always. All the products, the links of the things and all the deals. You can find all that down there. And then this graphic, you can zoom in and actually read the labels. And of course, I'll try to zoom in as we go. Now, the quick layout on this is I just, and I know like a lot of us do have some spare power supplies just from old routers and whatever. That's what I used, a little five volt, one amp adapter. One amp's probably overkill. And some people may be worried about, you, you can always go bigger in amperage because you could use a five amp, five volt power supply. It's definitely overkill, but it's not gonna overpower things. It'll only pull as much amperage as it needs. The issue you would have if you did like a, a small, like a 100 milliamp or something like that, then you'd probably run into issues. Now you could also power it using the USB port on the actual ESP32 dev board. That's Most of those are gonna be the little micro USB. So like a phone charger, a lot of those are one amp and those will be fine as well. So for the read sensors, Definitely do wire those where that when they're, the door is closed, that you'll, you'll want the circuit to be closed. Now, some people I've seen, they actually have two read sensors per door. They have one where it's 100% open and 100% closed. I think that kind of adds to the complexity of things. I, to me, I just want to know, is my door open an inch? Well, then I consider that open and that's what I want to know about it. I don't care if it's whether open halfway or open full, it's still open to me. Now for the ESP32 dev board, there's a ton of different models and methods and everything. If you do get some different ones, do make sure you follow the pinout on them. There's a couple different breakout boards as well. I know it's kind of the irony that a dev board is a breakout, so it's like a breakout board of a breakout board, but it does make it a little easier instead of putting a bunch of DuPont jumpers and just hanging it in the box. But to each their own, you can do whatever you want. Now for the 3.3 volts, remember that the ESP chip uses 3.3 volts because you know, you're feeding it five volts and the electronics on the dev board brings that down to 3.3 volts. Well, it's a great way to use that for the battery because the opener itself uses a three volt battery and a lot of those will go up to like 3.2. It's totally fine to run this at 3.3. I just went ahead and soldered to the back of it here and you can use this exact pinout if you had the same opener. I just used my voltmeter and figured out what pins were doing what and whatnot. And my opener, actually, whenever you push the button, it pulls to ground. So all I'm doing on the normally open, meaning that it's not going to be continually closed, is that whenever we toggle that relay for that half second, that relay goes click for half a second and it's the same thing as you pushing the button on the opener itself. And again, when I'm saying opener, that is the actual remote control opener. 
You can see here the blue line and the yellow line that feeds into the two relays. Now, if you just did one relay, you only need it for one of the buttons. Or if you did three, of course, you need three relays and you tie into the third button as well. So it's pretty simple layout. It's pretty easy to follow. Definitely thank Caleb for throwing this together. And if you want to look at it and scan through it or you got any different changes or, hey, you know something better, definitely shoot us a comment down below. I do want to potentially do something where tie all this together and make it a little easier with a simple board. But I do want to do my other step of doing the car sensors first because I don't want to like jump the gun and have something that's kind of I have to change anyway. So for the software side of it, we're using it in Home Assistant. If you're not familiar with Home Assistant, Home Assistant's really a home automation software that pulls everything together. There's some cloud stuff that you can bring in, but most of the majority of the drive towards Home Assistant is just doing things local without the dependency on someone else's server or service. And that way you kind of control your own thing, which is what we're doing here with these garage door openers. So this is the GUI of it. Now these two grayed out ones, this is the MyQ. Currently I do have the alarm armed in the home. So it disables the power to the actual garage door opener so they do fall off the network and then my Q sees them as down, but that's not a bad thing because our alarm is set and I don't ever want the doors opening if the alarm is set at night mode. And that's just all automated through an automation that when the alarm is set, it sends a power off command in the morning when we disarm the alarm, it will turn those plugs back on for us. So I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, I'm probably about to bust out Tasmoda. Nope, actually, I like to use ESP Home on a lot of these different DIY sensors. I know in the past I've done some stuff with Tasmoda on the actual garage door openers, but just due to everything I'm gonna do with these, and it is ESP32, I don't have too many issues with ESP Home on ESP32, I do on the ESP8266. Can also use this as a Bluetooth proxy, but one step at a time. So I'll jump into the config and I will explain this one because additionally I will probably in another video is be adding some of the car sensors which will be probably better with ESP Home as well. Got rid of the white background. This is just the YAML code to it. Now I will leave this exact file as it does evolve on my website and my blog and you can find those links down below. So you can just do all the copying and pasting and stuff and not have to type all this crap in. I like to do a static IP and that's just that MDNS that ESP Home has never worked well for me. So I do a static IP and I know it's, you're probably saying, why is it, why is your IP a secret? It's not really a secret. It's, but it's much easier. I do keep it in the secrets file because then it's just one list of all of my IP addresses. I do have this ready to go for Bluetooth proxy, but I do don't want to do too many things at one time. So kind of do the soap test of this and then, hey, it does work great for a week. Then I could add the Bluetooth proxy because then, you know, if you add it and then something breaks, well, then you know exactly what it is. Now I'm doing the substitution. So the disk name, I don't have to always change it. I just set it up here that Digi Raj or the Digi Rage, I guess that Rage for the MyQ crap. But um, basically, here's the two relays. Because remember, I have two doors, so you can go ahead and make this and you know, expand it. Hey, if you have three doors and you're just one door, you can make and change this based on what you do need. So the relays I'm using 22 and 23. I just kind of picked them; they were easy on mine. And then the binary sensors; these are the read sensors. Now, the way I have this set up is you do want it set for the pull up. And that way, whenever the door is closed, that it makes a complete circuit and pulls it to ground. And that way, if something fails, then, of course, you know, it's going to fail to open. But when you do have it open, you want the pull up which is a pull-up resistor. I'm not going to get all the electrical stuff, but it just stops that pin from flapping in the wind when the door is open. Otherwise, if you don't do it, you'll get the open, close, open, close. It'll drive you nuts. You Make sure you do use your internal pull-ups. Now, I did put a 100 millisecond delay 
and you can change that as you want, but it, like for instance, if there, if you know, the door kind of shakes a little bit right at the beginning, which is kind of common for a door, then you don't want to see that bounce back and forth. You know, it, it's, it'll say open, close, open, close real quick. So you can put those little filters in. Now the cover, this is where all the kind of the magic happens is it looks at the read switch to determine if the cover should be open or closed. The open actions, open, close, and stop action, you notice they're all the same because we just have one button and you just want to push it for half a second. So that's what this delay is. Now you can change the delay if your opener is a little different. I found that the half a second, I mean, that's typical for a button push. You know, someone pushes it and then lets go. And then it's just a duplicate of the other one. Now, I know a friend told me is do check, make sure read switch to relay to relay to relay to, you know, that's all going to be set because, yeah, when you're copying and pasting crap and you'll get things confused and then you're like, what the hell did I even do? Yeah, that's going to happen. So it's not a real crazy setup of how the cover works. There's just, it clicks the relays. And then the read switches determine if the door is open or closed. I know it's a probably a little intense of a setup, but it actually works freaking awesome. And I can really put that box wherever I want without having to worry about tying it to the actual doors. But hey, I put mine real close again because I want those car sensors I'm going to add to it. So if you've got some different ways you were setting this up or doing things, I'd love to hear about it. If you get stuck on this or you're doing whatever, you can always jump into the Discord chat down below. You'll find those links and shoot us a comment if you're doing something or just want to share some pictures there as well. Well, I do have to appreciate all of the Patreon subscribers, YouTube members, and it definitely helps bring new products and projects to the channel all the time. And yep, you know the drill, smash all them buttons down there and y'all take care. Um, and we're going to get my dad some shoes because his is Look, broken. Man, show it. Look. It just blew out, huh? Yes. So um we're going to get dad some new shoes. Um so um we're gonna we're gonna take y'all inside and see what shoes he picked out and see which one he likes. Doesn't we matter. expect much of a little bit old town now, <laughs> Travis. Oh, 10. What time is it? It's 10. It's 10.54. Oh, wait, today's Sunday. Oh. 1 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go down here to the discount store. Just because I want to go in there to see what's in there. Um, wait. We're not, we're not going in that store today because it's closed. I'm going to find you some shoes. Oh, and there. And there's. I don't want you to get enough water all in your feet and stuff. And there's shaving. And there's buckets and clothes. Cedar. But, yeah. Some dresses. Twelve thousand. That's the big one. Yeah. Here's some new fun pops. Oh. Where? Hit you. Oh, 